Okay. So we're going to do something uh, not different. Okay, it's another add-on. So the next uh, topic is what we call eccentric. Eccentric or uh, symmetrical. Uh, loading. Okay. So, as I said before the break, it is just an add-on. And it is just an add-on. Okay. So, what do I mean is just an add-on? So this is the structure that we are looking at now. Okay, this is our structure. So if I were to draw our transformation, this will be my X, my Y, and my rotation about Z. Okay. So as you can see, where the structure uh, at figure A, okay. Failure will occur where you see point C, okay, along the line, okay, so along this line, okay, failure will occur, right? And that is where we are going to analyze, okay, that's where we're going to analyze, okay? So if we look at, so where are the similarities, okay, similarities, where are the similarities? So if you look at point C, okay, with respect to point C, the applied force, right, is a certain distance away from point C. Okay, so P and P prime for this case, P X, okay, and P prime X, Y X because they're in the X direction, they generate a moment because moment, right, moment is equal to force multiplied by perpendicular distance. Yeah, perpendicular distance. Okay. So D over here is a perpendicular distance. So the moment for over here, so moment about the Z direction, okay, our moment about the Z direction is PX multiplied by D. Okay. So that's what's there. So for this case, if you look at how the structure will deform, the structure will deform in this pattern. Okay, so I'm going to sketch how the structure will deform. Okay, so this is the deformation pattern. <clears throat> right, based on the deformation uh, pattern, what we realize that the moment is acting this way. Right, so moment about Z. So the same thing applies, right? Compression. Tensor. Okay. Now, more than that now, okay? So remember, we had an axial load applying now, okay? So PX is our axial load, right? So if we look at point C, Right. If we were to focus on point C, based on Newton's third law, right, which is equal to action equal to reaction, same magnitude, different direction, we also have a what? We also have an axial load. Okay. We also have an axial load. That is why uh, for the sandwich material previously, I I have to put this in. Okay, I have to squeeze this in under axial loading because we're going to do the uh, we are we are we are going to do uh, a sandwich material that is under what eccentric loading. Okay, so what will happen then, right? So now, more of what is of concern is. How does the stresses at point C look like now? Okay, so that is more of a concern. Okay, so now we're going to write stress X at point C. 
So this will be equal to PX divided by area. Okay. So area over here is this area. Okay. So this is the A, which is the cross sectional area. And then this will be plus. I don't, again, I don't want you to worry whether is it plus or minus. Okay. I want you to analyze. Okay. If you forget, you are like, uh, is this plus or minus now? Okay, so I don't, I don't want you to worry about that. So this will be equal to mz over izz multiplied by y. Okay, so this component over here is due to XL loading. This component over here is due to bending moment. Right? One is due to axial loading. The other one is due to what? Bending moment. So this is this is the, the thing that changes. Okay? And, and, and the other thing that changed or different is now you have to find moment about Z, okay? So these two formulas is what that is new in this topic, okay? So this is straightforward. You all know about this. And this is due to our Excel load and bending moment, okay? That's the, that's the only thing that changes, okay? Now, let's, let's look at graphically, right? Graphically, what does this actually mean? Actually means okay, graphically. Graphic in, in when I say graphically, I mean in terms of stress field. Okay. So I'm going to have this is my X. This is my Y. Okay. And then this is our rotation in the Z. Okay. Then we have so I'm going to make our diagram simple easier to draw okay All right and then we have uh, a load p in the x direction This line I've drawn is a centroid. And I'm going to call this at point C. Why point C is, is of interest, okay, like what, what is shown earlier, because it is where failure will occur, okay? So now we know that the distance from here to here is our D, and the distance from here to here is our E. Okay, so for this case, the moment equation did change. Okay, so the moment about Z is equal to PX multiplied by D plus E. Okay, E is from the distance from the applied force to the surface and then the surface to the what? To the centroid. The chain line I've drawn is a centroid. Okay. Eugene? Yes. The D in the diagram is going from centroid to centroid, and it looks like you have your D drawn to the bottom of the structure. The D. No, the D is up to PX. At the top side, though. Yeah, it's up to here only. Oh, so it's different than what they're showing. Yeah, in it's different to what they're showing because what they're showing is they did not, they, they assume that we know the centroid. Okay. In, real, in real life, we don't know the centroid. We have to find geometrically, right? Okay. okay, that's why I split it up. So that's where the moment now is PX bracket D plus E now, okay? So we know there is a counter, there's a moment over here about Z axis, right? So based on Newton's third law, there's going to be a counter moment. Okay. So this is moment about point C, right? And this counter moment is 
is to make sure that our structure is still under static analysis. Okay, that's why we have to counter it. And based on Newton's third law, we have a P in the X direction. Okay. So we know that on top is compression. Bottom is tensile. The PX over here is going to induce a what? A tensile. Okay. The PX over here is going to induce a tensile. Now, next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to label two points. Okay. This point on top is called my point alpha. This point at the bottom is our point beta. Okay. So now we are going to look at the cross-sectional view now. I repeat, we are going to look at our cross-sectional view. So we do our cross-sectional view. So now this is my Y, this is my Z, this is my rotation about X, and I'll highlight down here, this is cross-sectional view. You know what? Uh, yeah, I, I need a lot of space. Let, let me draw down here. So this is our cross sectional view. So for simplicity's sake, our cross sectional view, I need to go into the other mode. Okay. So this is our, our cross-sectional view, and now this is our centroid. Right, this is our centroid. Okay. So for this case now, right, for this case, we will see this now, okay? So now there are, the formula we're gonna apply is stress X, is equal to uh, Px over A plus by Mz over Izz multiplied by Y. And I call the top point alpha and I call the bottom point beta, right? Okay, so now we are going to sketch Px over A, right? So as the diagrams prescribed, Px over A is in tensile. Right, as as this diagram, right? As I said, this is over here. This arrow is going this way because it's counteracting the PX over the other side because of Newton's third law. Action equal reaction, same in magnitude, different in direction. Okay, so now we're going to draw the stress distribution. Okay, so this line over here, right, that I draw is relative to your centroid. Yes or no? So the the the, the stress has to be. Uh, uh, I mean, wait. I will. I won't say the stress equals zero first. Okay. I don't do. I don't. I don't want to make you confused first. Okay. So we know that this is alpha. Over here is point beta. So because the formula for axial load or axial stress is just equal to P X over A. Okay, so we are, we, are, we are elaborating this term now, okay? So at any line upon y, okay, this is going to be a straight line, okay? So I'm just going to draw a straight line. Okay, I'm going to draw a straight line like this. Right? So this is the stress x under axial loading. Okay, so it's in tensile. Okay, it's under tensile. All right. So now the next one I'm going to draw is I'm going to draw the the bending moment diagram. Uh, not bending the the uh, normal stress due to bending uh, due to bending moment. Okay. So we know as what I've written above on top is compression due to bending. Down here is tensile, okay, because the, the moment is going this way. 